And we're live. That took a while to capture. That's weird. Okay. But it's all good. Uh, chat, I think we need to have a talk. Which one of you noticed that all the YouTube uploads of this were going up as Pathfinger and didn't tell me? I've had words with Daniel about the typo and we've got it fixed, but at the same time, come on, guys. Gotta do your part here. Weirdly antagonistic start to the show. Let's go to the normal one instead. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Happy time zones, wherever you might be. Uh, I'm Emma. Welcome back to the House of Hubris here on Twitch.tv slash Saracent. Uh, where... Uh, up front, I'm off my meds and make it even more loopy than usual. But we're back with Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous after our brief detour into horror last time. Uh, yeah. We're back here, back with Big Thalotot here, our tiny gnome druid in search of all things big, which includes the menagerie she's am amassing. I really hope this... Sorry, Twitch is having a... Twitch is having a moment today. How many pieces am I going to have to edit this VOD together from? What do you mean I can't access that bit on my phone? Well, guess I'll find out. Unless... Nope. The Twitch mobile, that's weird, y'all. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna trust that this is all working fine. It's Pathfinder. Uh, Bigoth is back. Last time we stormed the Grey Garrison, finally. We killed many demons. Uh, and, yeah. Went to fight Minago, got slapped down briefly, and then got mythic levels. Um, so yeah. Everyone is now substantially more powerful than they were. Including Clyde. We had to give Clyde levels as well. And yeah. We did not leave. Because I felt like the story would advance. Haven't chosen a mythic path yet. You get your first one in just a mythic hero in general. Before you specialise. But it's looking like we're leaning Trickster. But anything could happen. It looks like there's four that we haven't even seen. I should stop talking really. Uh, yeah. Was there anything else? Oh yeah. And the Wardstone. We fixed it by it turned out to be full of angels that were fighting each other and we sent all the angels to the different planes where they should be instead of in a rock in our world and that fixed things right let's see I continue read the notes you find no I refuse there are so many words in this game already And here we are, having just turned off this big rock, which is no longer glowing, but is still making the magic noise. Oh yes, and Waldrif nearly died. That was a thing that happened as well. Eight hours later. We had a party, including Theomander. He is just standing there. Warrior queen coming through with a round for the heroes. Whoa, the heart is packed. Have you considered mixing this little shindig, Beth? Anevia reaches when Anevia reaches the long table. Your party is gathered around. She heavily flops onto the bench and hands out the tankards of beer. Everyone is here, including Theomander, clipping through. Presumably, Sela. Where's Clyde? Clyde not get invited? Hell, we're big. Oh no, Big Thur's at the head of the table. Yeah, Clyde is just nowhere to be seen. This is frankly disrespectful to the first mythic Triceratops. I did consider it, and I am still considering it. It hasn't even been a week since the last demon was booted out of Canabras. And we really should be in a period of mourning for all the city's fallen. But the people deserve to celebrate. And she deserves to be honored for saving the city and possibly all of Magna. Okay, so when it said time passed eight hours, what it meant was time passed a week. Yeah, we did this together. But someone did more than the rest of us. 
don't deny your achievements. Biggest the Lord Josh here. Be plenty of miserable folk, only too happy to tear you down. Okay, yes, I am pretty great. According to the watch reports, there has been no demon activity whatsoever outside Canopolis. I get the feeling the fiends are as shocked by what happened as we are. What happened in the garrison? What you did? It was a miracle. I truly believe that the gods remembered us and decided to intervene. I've been sat here trying to pass it and I've just realised that the uh, what's going on in Erebeth's left, that's Nenio already passed out. And who's this in the blue cloak? Because there, because we've got Dar uh, Aslan, Darren, Amalia, Erebeth, Unconscious Nenio, there's Olbrig, Amber, Waldrif, presumably Sela. Oh no, that's Sela. If that's Sela, then... Who are you clip? Are you clipping through a Nevia? She just got here. The Amanda has some respect. And then this person in the blue cloak. Huh. Beth, come on, you agreed. No serious business today. All right, all right. I'm My life no is more. serious business. <laughs> Who would have thought we'd be celebrating a successful attack on the Grey Garrison, our own fortress, and that we'd blow the roof off the place? I do that everywhere I go. It's simply unforgivable. Comes the cheerful voice of someone sitting at the far corner of the table. Is it your blue cloaked mystery friend? While we're on the topic of the roof, maybe. There's already a rumor going around that you have been blessed by Iona Day The Lord shot here. And it was her power granted to you that destroyed the garrison's walls and roof. And it turns out the people want a little piece of that blessing for themselves. The townsfolk are gathering chunks of the garrison's rubble as souvenirs and talismans. And I'm sure they'll hit the black market soon enough. Oh, yeah. Here, read on this for me. Or good luck. And Evia pulled a piece of grey stone from her pocket. I... I mean, I kind of want to play the whole, look, I'm not really that special, but I kind of empirically am. Sure, why not? Nice. I'll put it on display at home. Or maybe I'll make a hole in it and wear it as a pendant. Look, ho ro stones with holes in them are magic, but if you put the holes there, then they're not. That's just cheating. Nevi. <sighs> what are you on about now? Control your wife. I mean, it does seem unlikely. She's a lot more lawful than I tend. Well, a couple perhaps. That's the same mirthful voice that joined in before. Can nobody but me see this person? Iomade's blessings are not conveyed through stones. And as public officials, we really should not. Erebeth looks to the end of the table where the voice originated. And her eyes widen as her words trail off. Okay, I'm not the only person who can see them. Oh, it's the queen! About public officials, but I myself have acquired a few pieces of stone and also wish to ask our heroine to breathe on them for good luck. So, what now? Are you going to toss me out of this fine establishment? The woman, dressed in unshowy finery, raises her eyebrows. Y your Majesty. Yes, it is I. I made the journey here to deduct the cost of repairing the garrison roof from your salary. We have not been introduced. Galfrey of Mendev. The woman rises from her seat, approaches you, and holds out her hand. I mean, on the one hand, you know my views on royalty. On the other hand, clicking every flirt option. Flirt with the queen. Flirt with the queen. The rumors of your beauty were not exaggerated. Thank you for the compliment. So... This is what she looks like. The one all Mendev is talking about. News of your deeds reached me even before my messengers could. I thought that said news of your death, and I was like, wow, even I hadn't heard about that. Your Majesty, we were just... I'll have them arrange. Calm yourself, Commander. I deliberately came here without any fanfare because I did not wish to draw attention away from our honored heroine here. My personal guard and the force I brought with me are standing watch outside the city. I ordered all of your sentries to stand down. They also deserve a break. 
Every person who tirelessly fought to save Canabas will enjoy themselves today. And my reinforcements will ensure peace and order. Simple as that. Like, just like they stopped all this trouble in the first place. Yeah, we should probably all sleep for several days. Because grand new deeds lie ahead, yes? Uh, I feel like I'm being set up for a job. Your Majesty, my dear cousin. That explains a lot. Count, I admit I was surprised to learn that you valiantly joined the ranks of the city's defenders. Pleasantly surprised. Uh, less valiant, more bored. I live to please you, my queen. My first thought when Daskari cruelly robbed us of noble Durandalev and half of Canabras's crusaders in one fell swoop was of you, my queen, and of how these events would weigh heavily on you. No one could have foreseen the demon attack, and we have so successfully held the defense here for four heroic crusades. You know, I get the feeling you might be being sarcastic. I'm going to drown him in the nearest <laughs> well this very night. <laughs> I feel like Darren probably gets that response a lot. I value your dedication. To drowning. I your eloquence. I hope you will continue to aid our soldiers. The Queen gives him a genuine smile, either being taken in by him or being an even better Viasa. Not a chance. You know that I am not made for the front lines. Because it's the Lord shot here. But alas, I really must go. Important matters to be getting on with. A new shipment of wine from Kionin, and three beautiful creatures of the same provenance. But I will most assuredly come to say my farewells before your army departs on its campaign, which, wherever it may lead you, will undoubtedly be crowned with victory. I only just noticed Olbrick's still got his claws out because they because we left them like that. Dude, put them away, you're eating. Also, can we have a brief aside for how I don't love in fantasy and a lot of fiction, to be honest, this whole kind of stereotype of polyamorous and or bisexual people uh, all being evil and it being kind of such shorthand for dissolute debauchery. Not a fan. I shall hold you to that count. And now, allow me to devote some time to the heroine of the evening. Darren, can I have all my stuff back before you go? You had a really nice crossbow. I did not come here solely to give you the chance to celebrate. But all serious discussions and official announcements can wait until tomorrow. I have big, big plans for all of you. Especially for you. Big for Lord but shut I here. to keep you in suspense for a little while longer. So I shan't say another word. Let us mark this victory. My first toast is to you, the heroine of Canabris. Oh, Kaja was waiting for her to say, now what are we drinking? No, we didn't voice that line. Yay, we did the thing. The fires of Canabris have died down. Now the army's path leads to the walls of Dresden, a fallen citadel that the Crusaders have been trying in vain to reclaim for 70 years. The new piece on the board might give their efforts some added momentum. Especially because that new piece has a Triceratops. Yay, we're leaving the city. Probably about to add a bunch of new mechanics. The her next to Rebeth. Hero, save Canabras. Yes, it is. Queen's coming. Queen! Rise, warriors. Today is a day of sorrow. I mean, most days are when you think about it. Because we weep for our brothers and sisters who perished in Canabris. Pride. Because despite demonic treachery, our heroes repelled the attack and saved the city. You're right, we are pretty great. I, Queen Godfrey of Mendev, declare this day the first day of the Fifth Crusade. And I am glad to introduce 
The one who will lead the attack on the forces of the abyss. A what now? The hero of Canobris, Knight Commander of the Fifth Crusade. Um. Your leader from now unto victory or death. The first one, please. And now it's time to rest. Everyone is dismissed. Everyone, return to your orders camps. You had the queen dismissed. There, the troop review is finished. I'll give you some time to look around the camp, and then I shall expect your presence at headquarters. And well, you may expect, Your Majesty. Hey, Clyde's finally here. Commander, please allow me to join you while you inspect our encampment. I I swear I at no point asked for this job. Examine the campsite of the Eagle Watch. Guess we're doing that then. Oh, hey, August is back. This is the supply train, and this is our quartermaster, Wilson Garms. That's not a name. Go to him for the supplies. And Hogus is being a dick. Wilson! The burly soldier with an impressive beard greets you with a broad smile. Wilson Garms, camp quartermaster, at your service. How may I be of help? Uh, what do people think of me? That's the most important question. They mostly tell tales about your unusual power, but they don't shy away from talking about you as a person, too. Soldiers are always like that. If I Omade herself descended from heaven, you bet they'd jabber on about how she grips her sword and how good she looks in her armor. I do look good. Thank you. Finally, somebody says it. Word is, you spent more time in the wilderness than in cities. You can read tracks on the ground better than any book and tell the weather three days ahead by the shape of the clouds. That means follow it in you into the wound isn't a scary thing to do. Yes, those are those are all things I can do. Absolutely. I don't care about you. What do you have? Would you like some crap? Because my god, do I have crap? I'm going to just sell this armor I can't use. Angular of Agile Fist is not useful. Who's that? Who's that? And do I have any axes? Oh, not axes. Weapons that are just like a plus. Anything that jumps out from here. Lots of plus ones. Plus of dueling. Uh, large to disarm. Whatever. Adamantine full plate. What does adamantine do? Extra damage reduction. Uh, always masterwork. Neat. And lower armor check penalty. A scimitar? Hello. Hello. Plus two and does more to chaotic evil creatures. Hello, yes. 26,000. Ah. That's expensive. I don't have 27,000. Sucks to be me, I guess. Ah, mm, does Albright have a amulet equipped? Yeah, got the swarm bone. Uh, sure, you can keep it, whatever. Ah, uh, whatever, let's just leave. August? 
Queen is expecting you, Knight Commander, so I shall not detain you. We shall talk later after our Sovereign departs. Theft. Wow, actually very good theft. Arrow of Law. And money, and a bunch of jewellery. And a spoon. There's so many spoons in this game. Grandma... Oh my god, the theatre troupe made it. A well-dressed old dwarf is lecturing a motley company, shaking her ladle at them belligerently. Noticing you, she flings up her hands. Good afternoon, your commanderness. Do you remember us? We're the crew from the next door theatre company, the ones you saved in Canabras, back when you weren't your commanderness yet. As you can see, we've come on the campaign with you. We signed up to clean pots and mend the soldiers' clothes. Keeping up theatre is expensive, so we all have to take side jobs, but we don't stop what we're doing. We're going to put on a play about your legendary feats. Your voice has gone to a strange place. I'm not sure I can follow. Of course, the crowd scene is difficult. We can't find the people to play the hordes of demons. And we decided against using a ritual to summon real demons. Probably fair. Luckily, we have Master Kem. He's invented a way to solve this problem using sound. We caught a pig and some piglets who ran away from a burnt out village. The glum and husky half-orc mumbles softly. We put the piglets in a box and scare them a little. And the sound they make is just like an approaching demon horde. Ah, yes. The hordes of demons, well known for sounding like slightly agitated pigs. But the most important question is, of course, choosing the lead actor who will play the great knight commander. We had to write Barney over it, breaking a number of lances, as well as a shovel, a rolling pin, and a set of back scratchers. But we couldn't just decide no matter what. Maybe you can help us. We have two candidates that are most suited to the role. One will have the honor of conveying your heroism upon the stage, Commander. So we have the half orc or the Cyclops. Don't you have a like representation is important. Are there any that are even like not twice my height? We're a small and poorly funded theater and we only have a few actors, but they're all so talented. One of a kind. I've chosen the ones that are the best fit for your role. Trust my vision. I have more than a few successful plays under my belt. I'm not convinced this is a good idea. Uh, but in that case, the Cyclops. We may as well go big. He's completely tame, believe me. Has a few issues with articulation, but what a powerful physique. We'll make him a nice, co nice costume. Wash him up. Brush his hair. Truth be told, and I'll show you mainly just make short heroic exc exclamations at the fateful moment, like... Onward, or we'll never give up, or my heart burns with courage. These are all voice stings, aren't they? Lamb King can definitely handle the script. Oh, right, so we're just asking questions about them. What about the half orc? Oh, look, you made Makia blush. She just loves gnomes and halflings. She always regrets she wasn't born little. No. No bad narrative. Bad. I've made my decision. The Cyclops. Wonderful. Sorry we took you away from all the important things heroes and commanders do. We're off to rehearsal. I mean, first we're washing parts, then we're off to rehearsal. Let's go, you lazy lumps. Don't embarrass old grandma now. Well, that was a series of events that sure did happen to us all. Theft. Don't want it. Here's Sela. Uh, Sela, you might have some more information on how I got roped into this job. A group of soldiers is talking loudly, laughing joyfully, and passing around a flask. So, picture this. My sword is by the fire, there's two goblins about to snatch it, and three more are digging through my tent. I'm sat in the bushes, wearing just my mail shirt, wondering what the blast to do. An old mercenary taught me about the mail shirt. You can't sleep in armor, but it's not so bad in mail once you get used to it. Too bad no one told me not to go into the bushes without my sword. So, what did you do? What did I do? I barked like crazy. Goblins are afraid of dogs, you know. They all went wild and started running around. I spot my sword, and they spot me. So I jump over the, to the fire wearing nothing but my mail shirt, and I grab my sword, and I yell in my big, tough voice, Oh, Inheritor! Grant me the power to crush these filthy creatures. 
My sword's shining, the goblins are screaming, I jump to attack them, and they fight back, but I fought them off somehow. And ever since then, I never take a step without my weapon. Still takes a sip from the flask. Yeah, <laughs> that's some story. Hey, hey, stop, stop go pink. Do something for us. You've only just set off and you're already drinking. And with the queen in the camp, stop this at once. The knights quickly snap to attention. Sela raises the flask and says loudly, Right you are, Commander Terabate. We are but drinking to the Queen's health. I'm still not totally now to her voice. Chaos? Yeah. Yeah, give me some of that as well. To Your Majesty. Erebeth rubs her forehead with the palm of her hand. Commander, are you sure this is the right way to train your soldiers? Never mind, it's your business. I was not attempting to train them, I just wanted a drink. I would contend that Sela knows what she's doing. Find the location of the roots from Neurosian. What? Why did I just... Fighters from the capital, it's too bad there are only recruits. Okay. What, these recruits? Aren't it? Probably not. Oh, also I've leveled. Ah, uh, so much is happening. Things. Where were those? Oh, that was saying I had successfully found the location of the recruits from Narasian. Right, I have actual objectives I didn't realise. What's what I've levelled? Off the back of seeing a thing. Ooh, I'll be able to turn to a leopard or a small elemental. Haven't unlocked any fancy classes. I mean, I'm not aiming for any of them, so I'm probably not going to. Just out of interest, are there any that I'm kind of going towards? Sword Lord, no. Arcane Trickster, I don't do Arcane. Assassin, I'd need to know how to stealth. Dragon Disciple, I'd just have to take one level in any spontaneous Arcane class. No, no, no. need to be much more lawful in order to join the Hell Knights. What, what does Lawmaster get you? More spells. A variety of stuff and Bonuses to lore and knowledge checks. I should probably do this. I mean, I did say that this was kind of going to be her thing. Monk need to be lawful. Uh, Mr. Piage, Arcane. Paladin, lawful. Good. That's a fighty thing. That's a fighty thing. And I'd have to have some kind of frost or winter aspect to witch up. I mean, to get Lawmaster, so we'd need a meta magic feat and skill focus in Knowledge Arcana or Knowledge World. We can probably do that. Why don't we go for that? I don't know. Making choices. Uh, we'll take our ranks in Knowledges and Law and. Uh, law Religion. So I'll need to check the difference between my wild, different wild shapes I have available and decide what I want to do. Wait a second. Do I get each of my wild shapes once a day or is it just I can wild shape once a day? Because they all say wolf, but is that I think that's just kind of 
boilerplate. So Wolf gets me plus two strength, plus two natural armor, faster, tripping bite. Uh, Leopard doesn't get the speed or the tripping, but just gets a bunch more attacks. Fire elementals burn things and have fire resistance. Yeah, so these all do the elemental stuff you'd expect. Uh, water elementals can freeze, air elementals can whirlwind. Transform into a whirlwind, 30 feet wide and causes bludgeoning damage. Neat. That's actually pretty sweet. And Earth Elemental is slow but punchy. Also, we should really level everybody else up because they've got levels and mythic levels. Darren. Unlocked anything new? No. Again, not going for it. So why would you? Taking points in. Knowledge, knowledge. Persuasion. Sure. Learning prayer. Just gives the whole party a plus one on most things and all your foes a minus one. Nice. And also learns cure serious wounds. Love that for us and neutralize poison. And your mythic rank. You think you should have boundless healing? Uh, more reach. And no limit on hit points for healing spells. Right, so and they're close range rather than touch. I mean, I always forget their touch, so yeah, go for it. This is going to take a second. Uh, let's just clean out the mythics first. Uh, Nenio, do more spells, sure. Melia also wants to do more spells. I mean, I never do any spells with her. But also, that said, I don't know what I'd... Dimensional Retribution's funny. But I also don't know if I can be bothered to manually level up from Elia everywhere all the time. Was that ready to? Tax opportunity, that's that. Or I could just give her more Shaman powers. Ah, uh, let's leave it as it is. I mean, what uh, spells does she even have? Oh, she's got quite a few spells, I just never use them. That's right. Good job, me. Alright, regular levels. Nanio wants to just become more Scroll Savanti. Sure. Learning Heroism and Fireball. Everybody loves a Fireball. What's Heroism do? Give somebody a plus two on everything. Okay. Amalia. Become more Spirit Hunty. Pour those points into trickery because you're such a totally normal person. Whip Jib is going to learn how to danger sense. Plus one on saves against traps. And dodge bonus to AC against traps. Neat. We're going to learn Burning Arc and Cat's Grace. Nice. Get behind those. Ember. Another witch level. I mean, she could Dragon Disciple if she wanted. I mean, she has so few attack options, and I also think it'd be quite funny. I mean, she'd get a new Hex.
Multi-class this girl. Yes, go. Dragon, 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 dragon. Turns out you were a dragon all along. Who knew? I mean, the fire spells were a clue. Have these points in the skills you like, which are like that and that. A lot of dragons. Dragons level as you level to sorcerer levels. I mean, she doesn't have sorcerer levels. She has witch levels, but still. Oh, right. If they don't have sorcerer levels, you instead gain your bloodline powers of the draconic bloodline using your dragon slap level for your sorcerer level. Okay. So, uh, what kind of dragon is she? And, right. Right, so this is kind of elemental specialization. Blue is electricity. Brass is fire. Bronze is electricity. Copper is acid. Gold is fire. Green, acid. Red, fire. Silver, cold, white, cold. So she wants to be one of the fire ones. Is there any difference between the three? So, what is it? No, not copper. Red, gold, and brass. They all have the same bonus feats. Uh, resist fire. Power of Whims also seems to be the same between all of them. I mean, Brass, it says, Contrament Conversationalist, Brass Dragons prefer to talk instead of fight. That seems to fit for Amber. So she'll be at, but from first level. Grow, grow Claws is a free action. So she'll actually have some hand-to-hand. -hand. Although it's based on your strength modifier, which I don't love. <laughs> Extra one damage per dice on fire spells and deception becomes a class skill. And she gets some natural armor, which will be helpful. Sure, why not? This is very silly. She didn't even come in the storming the castle. That did she? Yeah, she did. Just like, hey, while you were discovering your mythic bloodline, so did I get wrecked. Lan. I mean, you're just going to keep becoming the best archer in the entire world. Learn bark skin as a key power. Hmm, didn't know you could do that. Neat. And improved precise shot. Your ranged attacks ignore everything but total concealment and cover. Get wrecked. Uh, and he has more attacks per round. Wow. God, he because he, he wasn't doing enough damage already. And seal. I mean, how hard would it be to get her to Tower Knight? She'd just need a couple of points in Knowledge Arcana. That'd be interesting. But sixth level Paladin, she'll get a Mercy, which makes your Lay on Hands better. Yeah, look, Knowledge Arcana. It's a class skill and everything. There, you have two points in it. Now you can go Hell Knight. Why not? I just I just like unlocking prestige classes. It's neat. Do 
You should also probably know something about religion. And your mercy. Right, so it can stop. Things. I mean, fatigued is probably the thing that most commonly comes up. So there, now every time you lie on hands, it also cures fatigue. Go you. And finally, old break. Ah, no. Another point into being shifty. At 6th level, instead of attacking with all natural weapons, you can do... A, take a single natural weapon and attack with it repeatedly. Okay. I don't totally see the difference, if I'm honest. But you know what? Good for you. Right. Now, where the hell were we? There's a medic here. Maybe we should acquaint ourselves with them. This is the field hospital. Alas, the clerics of Canabra suffered especially heavy losses. So we're in desperate need of healers. We are few, but the gods are with us. The prayers of good people around the world are with us. Dear lady, you've been standing here a long time. Would you like to help? That doesn't sound like a thing Camellia would do. Hi, Camellia. Me? Who? Me? No, I definitely would not. <laughs> okay, so this is all the same dialogue. Uh, theft. Book. Confessions of a Heretic. Sure. And here is the chapel. Also theft. It's an honor. Nothing interesting. We have to go to this tent to be used as our chapel. Even the less pious crusaders will come here to say their prayers when the final battle is upon us. I've seen it happen in my previous campaign. Order of Torag, Father of Creation, Dwarven God, Craft, and Ken. Order of Sanrai, the Healing Light, Goddess of the Sun, Healing and Redemption. Order of Desna, the Great Dreamer, Goddess of Freedom, Travel, Luck, and Dream. Likely would that. Order of Arastal, Old Deadeye, God of Hunting, Farming, and Quiet Pastoral Life. This place has been sanctified. Cool, I guess got that from the, all the altars. And Order of Iomidae, Light of the Sword, Goddess of Justice and Valor, and Patron of the Crusades. Patron of the Crusades sounds like what you do what you call yourself to excuse a lot of war crimes. These are the Knights of Canabras, all that's left of the orders that built it in the city. Right, that was another thing you wanted me to see. Thanks, game. First year of Ethna, another upstart commander. Our queen sure does like them wet behind the ears. But yeah, I was literally given no choice in the matter. What did you say, sir? Who the hell is Jernor? Did we meet him before? Today, do you remember me? I'm Jernor. We spoke in the defender's heart. Oh. Okay. Who are you? Priest Rastel. Oh, I vaguely remember. Yeah, bye. You were the one who was like, I just want to make clothes or whatever. Alright. We've seen everything we were in informed we had to see. I believe. Yes. So, to the Queen, I guess. All the loot in here is really boring. I and mean, I'm going to keep trying it. Oh, this loot is not boring. Protection from evil. Monies. Vendor trap. Nice. This, boring. This one, probably also the boring because it's also the same. Yep. Commander's chest, that's me. It's just less sad. Anyway. Hi, your majesty. The Queen greets you with a stare, and dropped the pompous air with which she just announced the Fifth Crusade. The face of the ruler of Mendev appears calm and thoughtful. She's made her move and now awaits her opponent's reply. Commander, I'm satisfied with the troop review, but I do not expect they will be sufficient for the task. 
You will have to prove yourself a shrewd leader and hire the necessary troops with the provided funds. Oh no. Economic gameplay. I have chosen a target for your campaign, and that target is Dresden, our lost outpost within the world wound. The Sword of Valor was kept there, a banner that was once carried by Iomade herself. Our greatest relic was lost when the city fell. I should make one thing clear from the start. The Sword of Valor is no mere symbol, but a powerful <coughs> weapon against demons. The holiness of the banner weakens them and robs them of one of their most dangerous abilities, teleportation. It's true, I hate when demons just run away, Minago. A forced march to Dresden awaits you. Great. The Sword of Valor is kept somewhere within the Citadel. The demons probably think it's a hunting trophy. I mean, for them it is. Recovery is just as important as retaking the city itself. I hope the task is clear. I'm sending two specialists to help you, along with the soldiers. A historian, Nura Dendua, and a cleric, Sozial Vainik. I'm sorry, but Nura Dendua is only slightly more a name than Waldrif Jefto. The queen nods to the human man and the young halfling woman standing next to her. One of the famous inquisitors of the Church of Iomade also wants to talk to you. He's the probably a fascist, Yota, isn't he? Whom everyone calls Hawkblade. That's a that's a bit of a tryhard name, my guys. I do not wish to keep you, Commander. Oh, you're right there. The matter I must discuss with you is extremely important, but it is not directly related to the Crusade. You no doubt wish to meet your new comrades and speak with Her Majesty. Therefore, I shall leave you now. But I ask that you seek me out in the camp at your earliest convenience. You could just talk to me now. Hi! Listen, it's amazing here. It's like I'm in a ballad. There's knights in shining armor, deadly dangers, glorious feats. We are going to show those demons. I'm so tired of sitting in a library reading books about history. It's time I took part in it. <laughs> it it's possible to be too up for this. I'm glad to help our cause, Commander. If you have some time later, I'd like to speak with you further. Again, I'm not doing anything else now, clearly. You'll have plenty of time to talk. You're the Knight Commander's people now, her trusted advisors and companions. Now then, will you please leave us? Erebeth, you can go too. Uh, yeah, so when we met at the Defender's Heart, I didn't know you were going to give me this job that I never applied for. Some actions may be deemed bold, or even extreme, and beyond those, there are some you might call the Queen's last resort. I am not a simple monarch. I am at war with Very the Abyss, complicated one. a war which has lasted over a hundred years. I cannot allow myself the luxury of caution. In you, I see a chance, and I am willing to stake everything on it. However, you cannot blame me for putting you in charge of the crusade. <laughs> I only formalized what had already happened in the hearts and minds of many. People spoke of the power that descended upon you and helped you save the Wardstones from corruption and total destruction. Oh. Word of this okay, quickly that spread far beyond the borders of Mendev. There was no other person who could better fit the role of Knight Commander of the Fifth Crusade. Uh, did you know that the Waterstone was full of angel souls? That's a whole thing. I had guessed as much. Really? Many angels fought alongside us in the First Crusade. Heaven was unable to mobilize its full might to aid us. But individual Celestials volunteered to fight for our cause. Then one day, they all vanished, saying that they were setting off on an important mission. Not long after, Iomade's Herald erected the first Wardstone in Kenobris. And then the others in cities of course, Mendev. Even back then, I had nagging doubts. But my faith in Iomade easily assuaged them. It is for us to serve the goddess, after all, not to question her works. Okay, in that case, why do more people not know about this? Because that sounds obvious as hell. In any case, I am glad you did not allow the demons to commit sacrilege and gain control over the Wardstone in Canopris. I we had the option. One of the Wardstones. But the chain is still standing. Okay, so, like, I basically just... hard-killed that wardstone to save the rest of them. That's what happened. Okay. Also, yeah, uh, under the city I saw an angel die in the past, and then he gave me the, the this light of heaven. 
in my chest wound. Larion. I knew him. Ah, he disappeared how old are you? before the world wound grew, and Dresden fell into the enemy's hands. In the chaos, we had more important concerns than investigating the fate of a single angel. Even one so righteous and beloved as Lariel. And afterward, matters took a turn for the worse. The angels left us to go on their special mission. It is so strange to hear the names I used to hear when I was young. Like, getting a message from the past. It is sad news, but it brings me back to the times when we strongly believed in our victory, and we rushed headlong toward it without fear. Could it be that such times have come again? I mean, that could be any time if you decided to. All right, what am I going to do while you've given me all these jobs? Overlooking a spot of insubordination just at the moment. However, I shall answer you. I shall prepare the defenses at Nerosian and all the Bam. other border cities and plan the future of the Fifth Crusade. Does that satisfy your curiosity, Knight Commander? So I could do an angel thing, uh, do a lawful thing, or just be like, okay, thanks. Yeah, does the judge really spend so much effort making you live longer just so you can watch the battle from the rear? You are literally the symbol of the Crusades. Time since anyone tried to talk to me quite like that. Like an interrogator at a trial. The Queen seems astonished, but not outraged. She fixes her piercing eyes on you. I don't know if you realize what you're suggesting. If our enemies in the depths of the wound were to discover that I was with your army... They would immediately send their most vicious demons to attack. They would stop at nothing to be rid of me, and thereby sow chaos across Mendev. So what you're saying is you make a great distract. Got it. But, you are right. I shouldn't be sitting it out in the rear. I am a warrior queen, and a queen of warriors. Yet my fighters have forgotten what I look like. Fine. I shall join the crusade. I wasn't expecting that to work. Own terms. First, I shall assemble my entourage and lead the parade out of the camp. I shall catch up with you later, along with a few hand-picked bodyguards. We'll change our armor, and I'll become a knight of a minor order and join the troops incognito. Hey, Bush voice. Until we approach Dresden, no one should know I am among you. But before we storm the city, I shall show myself to the troops and join the battle. Let it be a surprise for the demons. I hope you won't complain of my company on the road, Commander, since you were the one who insisted upon it. <laughs> Do you have any other questions? Uh, no. Splendid. Ah, oh, yes. Oh, God, we there's always one more. Final matter to attend to. Sure. It should be rather enjoyable. Are we drinking again? Count, there you are. You received it, my instruction. It should be rather enjoyable, she says, bringing Darren and thus immediately ruining that chance. I did. Though I did not have time to read the thing before I was dragged before your majesty. In truth, I was readying myself to depart. No matter. I trust you will forgive your sovereign for the rather brusque summons, especially when you learn what prompted it. As you are aware, she Big has Thalor recently Shatter. been appointed my knight commander of the Fifth Crusade. I spent a long while pondering whom to appoint to the highly sensitive post of Commander's Field Attaché and Advisor Plenipotentiary without portfolio. Congratulations, Count. So what you're saying is, I was press ganged into this, but at least Darren was also press ganged into this. You don't get to sit it out that easily. You're voiced. We're going to have this you in the game as much as possible. It is a great honor, I suppose. What a wonderful gesture. I imagine our dear Count would have been inconsolable if you hadn't given him the chance to serve the common cause. Don't know why that's chaotic more than just sarcastic, but sure. I knew you would approve, Commander. Queen bestows a smile on you and then brings her gaze to rest on Darren once more. I had my doubts about whether you were ready for such a responsibility, Count. But your conduct in Kenobris has put my mind at ease. So, you will travel with the troops to Dresden. Only the commander may remove you from your post, but I trust that you will dutifully fulfill her orders and make a good showing of yourself. You don't get to run away with that nice crossbow. Especially since word of your appointment, Count, will reach the court at any moment. All of Mendev's nobility will be following your successes in service to the nation. 
including all of your devoted admirers. I even heard that one bard with whom you are particularly friendly has already begun composing a ballad to honor your heroic participation in the crusade and your faithful service to the commander here. It's true. The ladies love an, uh, what, a, what is it, um, advisor, planar potentiary, and attaché without portfolio. Your largesse truly knows no bounds, dear cousin. I am most, most gratified <laughs> by the honor you have shown me. Good line, Ray. Then let's get going. May Ayomade help us. We might need it. What do you mean, X? I swear I did examine campsite of Eagle Watch. What? Anevi, are you coming with us? So, tell me straight, I had that brawl at the Grey Garrison end. I heard the rumours, of course, that's kind of my job, you know, to listen. No idea what cobblers the Crusaders say about you. Some say that Iomade came to you and appointed you her herald. Others say that you died and an honest god's angel is now leading the army disguised as you. Still, others say it was just an explosion at an alchemist lab and I'm the one spreading rumours about your powers. I wish. I mean, there was an explosion also. You know, you really have changed since the Great Garrison. It's hard to describe it. You've become kind of more charismatic. More dangerous. I have a gut instinct about these things. I didn't I'd already be dead. You're dangerous, Commander. And by Destiny, I hope you'll be dangerous to our enemies and not to us. Or to yourself. Hey, bye. All right, watch yourself now. And hey, speaking of bye and watch yourself now... I need to take a short break because Twitch wants me to do some ads now that it's decided to actually work properly. So, as ever, hang tight. Uh, I'm going to get some water and you should probably do that too with all the other self-care things. Get up, move around, have a drink, have a snack. Take your meds if you need to. This is your reminder. And, yeah, let the ads run. and I will be back in a few minutes when we will actually get to doing things instead of clicking through character sheets and listening to dialogue. Hopefully. All right. Love you all. See you in a few. And we're back. Hello, everyone. Here we are in our command tent. Because we are the boss of this here crusade. Well, I remember, actually, I should probably check everyone's spell book because we all leveled up and we'll all have slots need filling. What do I want to have here? I mean, hold animal sounds useful. Lesser restoration sounds useful. Let's go with hold animal. Like, it's situational, but in that situation, it'll be very useful indeed. Oh, uh, yeah, that makes animals hate something. Um, greater aspect, sure. Not that I ever remember to use aspect. Oh, so CL is apparently also in my party. Cool. He's a level six cleric. All right. Ah, finally, our two-handed specialist. He can't use most of these weapons. Do you not have martial proficiencies? Why don't you have martial proficiency? He's got cleric proficiency. Light armor, medium armor, uh, simple weapon, and the weapon of their deity. Your deity is Shalin, which is why you can do glaive. And you have proficiency with glaive. Well, I do have this magic glaive. It's evil, but you know. What spells do you have going? Lots of prayer. Spell magic. Three casts of lesser restoration. You know what you're about. And one of communal protection from evil. Uh, 
Uh, get a cure. Just and actually, arrow of law could be useful. Uh, blesses, unbreakable heart, and nothing in your domain slot for some reason. Uh, protection from evil. And his special domain is just goodness, being good. You don't need to prepare slots because you're spontaneous. Nenio, you have so many open slots. Oh, yeah, because you just took abundant casting, didn't you? Uh, more casts of magic missile. Another summon. D4 plus 1 versus D6. Yeah, have another snowball as well, and another mage armor. Um, take another mirror image, another acid arrow, another acid arrow, stone call, and another main pit. Fireball goes in every plot, and maybe a heroism? Nope. And you've got haste, excellent. So we can't cast level 4 spells. Melia also just took abundant casting. I said we'd actually get onto doing things and not faffing around with character sheets in this part, but clearly I lied. Uh, a bit more inflicting. Maybe a Bane. Just to annoy people. Sleep. Be useful and another bless. Summon frog, bless a restoration. Protection from alignment. Sure. Um, maybe just more damage spells. And an aid. Get some buffs in. Uh, currently, how animated animate dead and spell magic? Well, you should know how to curse people. You should also know how to throw lightning at people. And you could also put a lot of people to sleep. And dominate an animal. Make your own jokes. And turn people blind. You're our attack from, can you tell? Meanwhile, Wildriff. Meanwhile, Wildriff. Rob, 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 Rob. Uh. Take some more attack spells. Take mage armor and maybe a flare burst. Bit of everything. Summon dog. Burn it up. Acid arrow. Scorching ray. Dig hole. Can't cast threes or fours yet. We'll get there. Ember, you're spontaneous, it's fine. Land, no spells. Sealer, only has two spell slots. Ulbrig, no spells. Cool, done. Boom. Moving on. Let's actually leave this tent. If it's the last thing we ever do. Ah, 
You there, you want to talk to me? Commander, a tall man with piercing yellow-green eyes, gives you a brief nod. Brief? Brief nod. Let me personally congratulate you on your new title and thank you for your time in advance. I am Leota Hawkblade, an inquisitor of the Church by Armaday. Bring all the light. I require your assistance in a certain delicate matter involving one of your companions, young Count Darren Arendae. That, that tracks. Uh, you one of Hulrun's followers because he was a dick. Leota's face freezes for a moment, but he nods. Yes, of course. So what about those atrocities? Liotta is silent for a while. Usually people reveal such things about themselves only to their confessor, not to some curious stranger. Still, I did ask for your help, and that imposes certain obligations upon me. Let me put it like this. I spent enough years by Prelate Hulrun's side to learn how to keep him from going over the line. Prelate is an extraordinary man, but he's fallen prey to his own paranoia and monumental sense of responsibility, which has gradually eroded his razor-sharp mind. He's witnessed so much hideous darkness that he now sees it in every shadow. Yet his strength was, and still is, a shield for all the people of Mendev. That's my opinion. His comrades and advisors are necessary to prevent him from making unforgivable mistakes. So, you know, if, if unsupervised, the man will turn into a fascist in 0.4 seconds. But other than that... Yeah, where were you anyway? I was on the hunter. Very successful one, but as often happens in life, this minor success was a mere harbinger of a larger failure. If I hadn't been so far away from Canabras on the day of the attack, I might have been able to help my comrades and prevent a number of deaths. Yeah, you might. Thanks. Not an easy topic for me. I'd prefer not to discuss this again. Don't worry, you won't. It's just paid off the trade. Anyway, what was the deal? I ask you to assist the Church of Iomade in an investigation of the utmost importance. I understand that the leader of the crusade has plenty of other matters to attend to, but please allow me to tell you the details. Perhaps it will explain why I'm calling upon you. The Inquisitor's open face instantly reveals his feelings. He frowns and looks through you, lost in thoughts for a moment. I suppose you've already heard about Count Arendae's story. I refer to the tragedy at the Heaven's Edge estate. He did tell us that. You're going to investigate that again? Yes, I am. I have several reasons to doubt the widely shared account of what exactly happened at the estate and how it happened. He commander, I was among those sent to examine the estate after the incident. I saw everything with my own eyes, and I still remember it clearly, even, clearly, even though it happened a life, it feels like it happened a lifetime ago. Words. Heaven's Edge was a unique place that still carried the spirit of old Mendev. Mendev before the world wound. And yet on that day it turned into a labyrinthine house of horrors like something only seen in our nightmares. Now apologies for the digression, I wanted to tell you about my suspicions. Everything about the incident seemed odd. Why was the only person left alive a young boy with a newfound talent for divine magic? Why did nobody send to Canabras for help, even though the agony spanned many hours? We found the demons dead, with their heads cut off when we got into the estate. How were they defeated? How did the disease kill even the paladins present at the estate who were said to be immune to any disease? The demons have found a way to penetrate the Holy Warrior's defenses. Why has this never been repeated since the tragedy at Heaven Ed Heaven's Edge? You are the only person who can help me here, Commander. The only living witness of those events is currently serving in your army. Not technically. Your army's route will take you to the end of the very site of the tragedy. Heaven's Edge has been abandoned and sealed with potent magic throughout all these years, and only the Count has the power to break that seal. He is unlikely to invite an Inquisitor inside. In any case, he won't like me sniffing around his family seat. But if you, as his Commander, express your wish to visit the estate, he will be obliged to fulfil it. And I will simply follow you as one of your attendants. There are a hundred ways, a thousand paths, a myriad loopholes in human lives that the forces of evil can use to their advantage. I'm not sure which one of these led the demons to the gates of Heaven's Edge, but I do know it wasn't a simple raid that the kind of crusaders face every day. That incident involved a significantly more powerful entity. And that is why I am asking for your help. We cannot be sure that such a tragedy will not happen again until we uncover the truth. So, you suspect that Darren's hiding something? Because, yeah, me, too. I deliberately refuse to entertain any theories or suspicions so that it doesn't affect the investigation. There is a saying among my colleagues that suspicion is the mother of prejudice, and prejudice is married to failure. I can only tell you that Count Iron Day wasn't summoning, suffering from demonic possession, the most common malaise in our country at the time. Prelate Hulruin himself examined the boy right after the tragedy, and he didn't send anything awry with him. No, he's just a dick. Alright, what do you need me to do? 
Leota bows his head to you with exceptional reverence. Thank you, Commander. Now I ask you to speak to the Count and tell him that you wish to see Heaven's Edge. Please do not inform him of my presence right away. I will join your escort when it's time to travel to the estate. When we get there, I will also require your help during the investigation. Follow me, observing my actions as an independent witness. If you have any other questions, please feel free to ask me. I will remain here for a while. No. Oh, this is back up. Yes, because I turned the camera around. Right. Apparently, Darren's right behind me. Also, the new guys over here. Hi, Darren. I'd love to come to your old house. Oh, I was just about to mention it myself. I've been thinking now that I'm in the middle of this whole crusade nonsense. I simply must devise new ways to have fun. With all the recent commotion, my birthday completely slipped my mind. What if we were to celebrate at Heaven's Edge? Not far from here, and you'll get to enjoy a banquet in a bona fide haunted house. Darren seems to have trouble getting the words out, which clearly indicates how rarely he has to ask for anything. It's your... my... Superior, and I'm your advisor. I am obliged to ask your permission to leave for the festivities. And I want to invite you too. I feel the commander can free up an afternoon while soldiers are on leave. Y your entire family died there. Darren purses his lips for a moment before replying in a bored drawl. Yes. What of it? Am I supposed to weep and quake with fear for the rest of my life? Stayed away from the damn place for ten years and now? Now I'm going to return there to drink, dance, and be merry without a care in the world. You can keep your squeamish disapproval to yourself. Alright. Perfect. You'll have a ball, I'll make sure of it. Something strange flickers in Darren's smile. Great! It's gonna go so well. Also, yeah, the bit where I got myth powers. Did you? It looks like it. I genuinely hoped that getting away from you would be the end of it. If your gift truly did come from my armadillo, then giving me a smidgen of that power was a very subtle joke on her part. I had no idea that our divine light bringer of Mendev even had a sense of humor. Don't get me started on my many acts of sacrilege against her. That obscene engraving, the truth about the test of the Starstone, is the text one by far. Alright, bye. New guy. Hello again. I'm very pleased to meet you. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me. A young cleric stands before an easel, his brush hovering over the canvas without touching it. Instead of painting, the young man absentmindedly gazes at the sky of Canabras, which is still streaked with towering plumes of black smoke. Finally, he notices you and smiles, shaking off his stupor. It's a pity I wasn't there at the Grey Garrison to witness your feats of strength with my own eyes. The flash, however, could be seen miles and miles away. Some people were frightened of it, thinking that the demons had blown up the remains of the keep. I, for one, knew immediately that it was a good sign. The light above the city showed us that there was still hope. No, a part demon had blown up the key. Uh, you, you wanted to discuss something with me? Yes, I have a personal request. Before we undertake our journey and leave Canabras behind, I would like to visit Martyr Zacharias' cemetery for a Zac few Zacharias, not, not Zacharias, here, okay. And it's important. I would like to pay my respects to my friends from the Temple of Shalin, who died defending the city. Also, if it's not too much trouble, I would like you to come with me to honor their memory. Their friends and family will be at the funeral, and perhaps the commander's personal presence will bring them comfort. Unlikely. I just say things. I know that you are burdened by many cares right now, so I understand if you can't find the time. But if you could, I would be sincerely grateful. Who are you? My name is Sozio Vanek. I am a cleric of Shailen, the Eternal Rose, and the Goddess of Beauty. Yes, I know that many people would consider me useless in a war. This is not a usual war, though. Just consider our enemy. The Abyss and his demons are the very embodiment of everything evil and ugly in the world. Perhaps a disciple of kindness and beauty might come in handy. Slightly judging. I have no doubt that we will win this war, Commander. We just have to. It is our destiny. Mm. My role is to help you, and all those standing by your side in this struggle, to survive and flourish. 
Everyone deserves the chance to find peace and happiness in the world that they are defending so selflessly. Goodbye. You must be rather busy indeed. Leading a crusade all by yourself is no joke. I still believe that you are up to the task. This war has been raging for a hundred years, but you've given us a chance at victory. That does sound like something I'd do. Thanks for noticing. Anything else of interest? Probably not. We should probably just leave. Stop clipping through me, old brig. Stand further away. So, you're the war chief now. You can lead us to free our chorus from those fey. Old brig nods his head with respect. I felt it the moment I saw you. This one is special. You should go and get yourself a whole army in no time. That I did not expect. Well, how does your newfound power feel? You've gone to your head yet? Uh, they're demons. Fey, demons, angels. Ulbrich screws up his face and waves his hand in front of it like he's trying to get rid of a foul smell. They're all the same spooks. They could have stayed in their magic forest, forests happy, happy as a pig in mud. But no, they had to poke their funny heads into the mortal world. Hold on, don't change the subject, huh? What do you think about being war chief? It's, it's weird. Yeah, it's a scary thing to be responsible for others. Especially when you're not out picking mushrooms to take them to war. Even if you win, some of them surely won't make it back home. You're the one who has to bear the burden. Ulbrick runs his hand over his beard and takes his head in thought. But I know you'll do just fine. Not because I've seen you in a battle, although you are worth a whole band of warriors in a fight, now that's land. I know you make a fine war chief because you're not thinking about power or honours. You're concerned about the people in your charge. And as long as you hold on to that, you have nothing to fear. Well, I didn't come here just to flap my gums. Since I'm going to war, uh, since I'm going to war, and you're in charge, I better do this the right way. Ulbrich lowers his head and says solemnly, "My blade and my life are yours, War Chief. I mean, it's not like I need a blade. My talons and beak would do the trick, but saying like that's the dumb thing. My talons and beak are yours. Just doesn't have the same ring to it. There's something else. I can already see things are bad, but the tales of Ulsar chorus burning down and its people dying out." I'm sorry, I just don't believe in those. Can't be true. We're not the kind of folks to be snuffed out just like that. I have kin in a village not far from here, current glen. Let's go there and talk to them. Have them fellas in. They're smart folks. Perhaps they'll help us in battle too. Together we'll clean up our chorus before you can say, All right, ye foul creatures. Aubrey bumps his fist into his palm with a chuckle of bravado. All right, I'll go prepare for the road ahead. Take care, War Chief. More people should call me that. A cooler name than Night Commander. Head on. Uh, right. Who do we want? If we're taking, uh, who do we want? I mean, Lan, obviously. Let's switch Cerciel in for Amber just to enjoy having a new healer. Right, let's rotate as much as we can. Uh, swap Wild for Camellia. Just keep land for the moment, because Jesus God. And now here we are on the world map. Quite a nice world map. Crusade. Uh, you can now control armies. Winning battles against demon forces provides a number of benefits, such as resources for the economy, relics which can be turned into new items, 
Capture enemy fortifications that previously blocked the advance. You can rebuild them for yourselves. Enemy army's different strength, which is displayed as a number next to the name. By hovering over the enemy army, you can learn more about the composition and the reward. You can switch between party management and army command modes by clicking the banner at the top of the screen. In army command mode, you can select armies by either using the panel on the left or clicking the figures on the map. Much like your party, armies use roads to move around the map. To move, an army must spend movement points, which can be restored by resting for a day. Okay. So I only have one army. But there's a level one demon army over here. An unsolved conundrum. Oh. Sounds fun. And then I think it'll grow. Oh, we have to actually like manually do the army stuff as well. And it's in the top down. Huh. We're in battle, yes. I get that. Basically the same thing. You can use total defense for a whole round. And then numbers happen. Right, so the numbers are how many people they are. We lost some people, I guess. New victories brought me new finance points. Because this is a strategy game. To recruit new units, click recruit. Recruit new units, bearing Canabras. Having defeated a band of cultists who had driven the captives from Canabras and made the ruins of Valus' gift to their temporary base, Kumad's army celebrates his first triumph. Unfortunately, the demon worshippers have killed all the citizens and gathered their belongings over a huge pile in the middle of the camp. I mean, where's that buy things button, did you say? Uh, huh? Okay, I don't know what materials I need. I don't know, I may have just done everything in the wrong way. Okay, we've got Socio with us, so we can go to the cemetery. Path to this location is unknown. What do you mean by that? Main ability is a swift action? Me. like go into Canabras and then back out. Oh. Sorry, like I say, not super with it today. Mad to have recently been cocked up and heard. Okay, A, why would you draw this backwards? I 
I guess I meant to get out on my own, it, like, because it wouldn't let me actually get to the funeral otherwise. Let's see what happens if we fight our way through the northern gates. Oh no, that was to leave. Okay, back out we go. Did we bring Sela? No, we can't do her thing. I've just seen that other part of a path leading off this camp. Simple as. Oh, I am sorry, chat. Like I say, I... Thanks to national supply chain issues, I am, as of today, off my ADHD meds and brain is not doing particularly well. An elderly man limps towards the grave and clumsily throws a handful of soil inside. How oh, unfair. They were all so young, they had their old lives ahead of them. They sacrificed themselves and an old cripple like me still lives. Hey now. An elven woman with her face bathed in tears steps up to the grave. She whispers, Painting. It burned. Like everything else in the house. There's nothing left for me to remember you by. Nothing. The young man throws a handful of soil into the open grave and stands beside it for a while, lost in thought. Finally, he starts, sighs and sits back. Yeah, we did bring Darren, which might have been a bad idea. Sorry. Oh. So she will throw the handful of soil into the grave in front of him. He takes a breath and prepares to speak, but it seems he simply cannot find the right words. Cleric wipes his tear-filled eyes, gathers his resolve, and says in a gentle voice, I wish you a warm welcome in, Sh in Shailen's realm. We'll win this war, swear it to you, we'll banish this ugliness and evil, make the world richer, and let peace blossom in it. We'll make sure anything like this is... He breaks into sobs mid-sentence, then falls silent without finishing his declaration. I think thank you is the correct response here. Sociel is too absorbed in his grief to hear you, but the other mourners nod in approval, with wiping their tearing, teary eyes. They were good people. I can't believe they're gone. <gasps> what is that? <sighs> Zombie. An elven woman shrieks in horror, disrupting the atmosphere of silent mourning. A trembling hand points at something moving inside a grave. Suddenly, a corpse climbs out of the ground, wearing a horrible, wafting a horrible stench from its rotting body. It's a zombie! Run! That's a different podcast. So many zombies. Well, they're all dead. Save the last one for me. Oh my god, gameplay. Why these graves are probably in the way, aren't they? Yeah. Hide. You found the wrong mom. Just dead. So we're coming over here specifically to get stabbed.
God, sorry, I... I am so sorry. Uh, this hasn't happened in a while because, again, I was until recently on some good meds. Be gone, fiend! So, Ciel also has a bit of luck. Where did she get that from? I think after this battle, we might be calling it. Oh yeah, I didn't prepare most of these new ones, but I have a couple of normal things of cast and pit. a place to catch a bunch of them in a pit that isn't already messed up with all our guys, so let's just I'll shoot. This obstacle. Game. Go ahead. Should have listened to reason. I mean, these are all undead, so just healing would hurt them. Notice the zombie down there. <laughs> and that's how you get attack of opportunity, kids. Come on, stop rocking twos. Um, Pokemon shoot. Dad. Dad. Oh, dad. The spirits demand your blood. Gross and black as it is. Okay, calm down. Yeah, I think we might actually have to call this because this is getting ridiculous. I am so sorry. It We can't save in the middle of a fight. Come on. Right, let's focus. Let's get this done. Nenio, what spells do you have that you can murder everyone with? No, I...
Nice. Darren has channel. Do I have channel hurt undead? I sure do. Yeah. Get yeah, right. Let's hear you cry. Or not, given that you are in fact a zombie. Dead. Dad. Dad. With a heavy heart, Sochiel looks at the corpses of his friends, returned to rest by his own hand. What is this twisted mockery? What could possibly... Wait, what's this? Bends down and recovers something from the ground. Look at this. Sochiel hands off a black onyx gem to you. Once precious, the stone is now covered in cracks, falling apart in your grip as you examine the engraved monitor's head. The unholy symbol of Baphomet. Pardon me. Cleric's voice, perplexed at first, fills with rage as, a, as he speaks. Cult is simply murdering my friends wasn't enough for them. They, they, no, they had to come to the funeral and desecrate their graves. I'm sorry to hear this. Thank you. I'd already said goodbye to them, seeing them again in that form. Carolyn as my witness, it was not easy. Wait, the townspeople fled the undead without knowing they have a traitor among them. Or if they are, they're in great danger. We must find them. We've historically been great at finding the traitor. Any of them carry anything interesting? Nope, same time shared. Sure. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to call it because, as I say, I am just dying out loud right now. Um, hopefully I'll have leveled out a bit by next time. Though, sorry again. Bloody pharmaceutical companies. So, hey, uh, uh, if you're watching, you know where to find me. But just in case, this is twitch.tv slash sarasent. That's S-E-R-A-S-E-N-T, the house of hubris. Streaming here every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 2 p.m. British time. That is currently... 10 a.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific, no, 4 Pacific, no, the other way. My brain has melted. Seven, 10 and 7. Yes? And now I've forgotten what I was even talking about. Great. Oh, time differences. Yes, it's um, five and ten a.m. and seven a.m. respectively. Hey, if you want to do the maths instead, if you don't want to do the maths, and God knows I don't, um, you can just give us a follow. Get uh, gets you notified whenever I'm here. You miss anything? Vods are available on uh, yeah, available on the Twitch for eight weeks after the fact. Everything else is on the YouTube. Links down there. Says VOD archive, or it is youtubecom slash at House of Hubris, where you can find everything going back to the start of the channel nearly three years ago. If you feel like supporting my medical bills financially, you can of course subscribe or pay or subscribe or cheer at Twitch, but you very much don't need to. Just Turn up, hang out, be chill, be good to each other, and then everyone's having a good time. Oh, and I forgot to mention as well, you can subscribe on YouTube, which is free, but gets you those hot fresh bods in your inbox three times a week. Is that everything? Links down there for socials. It's House of Hubris pretty much anywhere. That's at House of Hubris on Twitter. At House of Hubris at kind.social on Masto. At House of Hubris dot bsky dot social on Blue Sky where I do all the normal social media things. Including, at the minute, um, announcing the new stuff I'm in, because the new season of Devoid of Space has just started, and I've got a whole episode in that. The... The other one. 
My brain's sorry. Chaker. Also releasing season two now. In which I play the Mars Commander who is just trying her best. Yeah, links to all of that can be found on my socials or just in the internet more generally, so you know. Okay. Are we done? I think we're done. Sorry again about the shortest stream and the lack of thereness. I need to go and pass out. If I haven't already. Okay. Okay. Love to you all. Take care of yourselves out there. Hopefully I'm doing better on Saturday, but I'll see you then. Bye.